From Jeremiah Films comes these hard-hitting motion pictures now available on video cassette. Devil Worship, The Rise of Satanism, brings to light one of the most dangerous trends currently exploding throughout the world. AIDS, What You Haven't Been Told, a shocking investigation into the myths, cover-ups, and political manipulations concerning our planet's deadliest virus. The Evolution Conspiracy, a breathtaking documentary featuring leading scientists from around the world attempting to unravel the mysteries of evolution and, in the process, uncovering what may be the most incredible hoax of the century. Gods of the New Age, a fascinating and disturbing motion picture which traces the history and occult origins of today's New Age philosophy, from its beginnings in mystic India to its mass infiltration into Western culture. Fear is the Master takes you inside one of the world's most dangerous cults and reveals firsthand how recruits are brainwashed into submitting to a maniacal leader. The Godmakers, a gripping investigation of the Mormon Empire which exposes the deception of its massive political and financial network. Temple of the Godmakers continues the investigation of the Mormon Church and brings you inside the Mormon Temple as you witness secret occult rituals recorded for the first time ever on film. False Gods of Our Time, a four-part series filmed on four continents, which accurately provides insights into the confusing and contradictory religions of the world. Operation Tentmaker boldly tells how ordinary men and women have become missionaries within countries that forbid the sharing of the Christian gospel. The Witness at Your Door, a behind-the-scenes examination of the beliefs and motivations of those uninvited door-to-door -door visitors, the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Mormon Dilemma dramatically presents an accurate comparison between the Mormon belief system and biblical Christianity. A Song for Grandma, a moving documentary designed to motivate volunteers to visit the elderly lying alone and forgotten in our nursing homes. These are available to you from your local video retailer, or you can call 1-800-828-2290. That's 1-800-828-2290. California residents call 1-800-633-0869. Call today. Teenagers across America are playing with a new and frightening game, Satanism. Their school books are marked up with satanic symbols, upside down crosses, pentagrams, the number 666. Their fashions glamorize the demonic. They are seduced by heavy metal heroes, many of whom feature satanic imagery in their songs and album covers. For some of these young people, the fixation on violence, evil and death leads them to commit abominable crimes, including suicide and human sacrifice. Joseph Beeson, 18, and Edward Bennett, 19, both raised in Mormon homes, drew blood from their own veins and mutilated animals in satanic rituals. But that wasn't enough, so they eventually killed 18-year-old Michelle Moore. Sean Sellers, 17, the youngest death row inmate in Oklahoma, brutally murdered his mother and stepfather because they tried to prevent his satanic rituals. Scott Waterhouse, 17, tortured and killed a 12-year-old girl in a grisly satanic slaughter. Pete Rowland, 17, formed a satanic cult with three other boys. After sacrificing a cat, they turned on Steve Newbury, the fourth member of their group, and beat him to death with baseball bats while chanting, a sacrifice for Satan. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was convicted of 13 murders and 30 other felonies. During the summer of 1985, he beat, strangled, raped, sodomized, shot, and slashed his victims in a rampage of sadistic, satanic slayings. In the spring of 89, the dead bodies of 13 victims, one of whom was only 16 years old, 
were found mutilated and buried in a common grave near the American-Mexican border in Matamoros. This satanic drug smuggling cult believed that sacrificing humans in bizarre rituals would give them magical protection. The victims had been dealt blows with a hammer and some suffered horrible mutilations including the removal of brains, hearts and other organs that were then boiled in blood. For those of us who have been involved in cult and occult research over the years, these atrocious reports are unfortunately nothing new. They are only the tip of the iceberg. Because Satanism is by nature clandestine, it's hard to estimate the numbers of people involved. Not all satanic groups are involved in criminal behavior, but with increasing frequency, law enforcement agencies across North America and Western Europe are receiving similar reports of illegal activity. Satanically inspired child pornography and ritual abuse, animal mutilations, human sacrificial murder, cannibalism, rape, sodomy, desecration of graves in Christian churches are just some of the findings. Victims are from all walks of life. Their stories are grotesque and beyond human belief. The purpose of this video is not to over-sensationalize a hideous subject, but rather to inform you of a very real problem that is sweeping across our nation. What used to be hidden or secret is now arrogantly brandished in public by Satanists who recruit openly and display macabre graffiti and gruesome mutilations in public places. In this video, we wish to educate you and your family on how to protect yourselves from the effects of Satanism. Today, a growing number of people don't believe in the existence of a personal god or devil. However, many believe in a force or universal power which can be tapped into at will and manipulated, used for good or evil, they believe, by performing various techniques and rituals. Among subscribers of this occult philosophy are white witches, black witches, and Satanists. Satanism and, and black witches worship Satan. Alongside of that, you have people calling themselves white witches or Wiccans who claim that they have magic powers, but they only use them to do good. There's a lot of confusion between Satanism and witchcraft. The two terms are usually lumped together as well. Satanism, as it stands, is basically a reversion and perversion of Christian symbolism. Whereas witchcraft, or Wicca as we prefer to call it, is a totally separate, autonomous organization that, that has its own form of worship which is not related to Christianity in, in any way at all. When I first got into Wicca, it looked really good. It, 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 it seemed to be white and innocent and just going out and like gathering herbs and worshiping nature. But as I got into the higher degrees, I learned that the name of the horned god was Lucifer. And I learned that, the, for instance, the sign of second degree was an inverted pentagram, which is, of course, the symbol of black magic, the five-pointed star turned with the two points up, symbolizing the horns of Satan. And it began to dawn on me that there were things here that weren't quite as they should be. According to my Bible, witchcraft is witchcraft. God does not distinguish between black or white or gray. Uh, witchcraft allows you or teaches you to depend on supernatural powers and spirits to get things that you want on this earth. So I believe that despite all the good that Wiccans think they do, their power source is exactly the same as that of Satanism. Many officials have been reluctant to admit the horrendous ramifications of satanic activity in America and Europe. But despite opposition, some people have come forward and spoken against the upward swing of Satanism as a serious epidemic that must be considered. David Wilshire is one such person. As a British Member of Parliament, he actively alerts his fellow countrymen to the growing dangers of Satanism. Once you open up the mind to the sorts of ideas and imagery and history of witchcraft, where is the dividing line between something which is a bit of a giggle and something which slips very readily uh, in, into full-blown Satanism, if that's the right phrase for it, where there are no bounds to how nastily and foully you treat other people for your own gratification. Englishman Alistair Crowley, a leading inspiration in today's revival of Satanism, was a bisexual heroin addict and demonologist who was violently opposed to Christianity. In his book, Magic, he detailed the proper procedure for performing a child sacrifice. 
Crowley's powerful influence is seen in such groups as the OTO, Ordo Templi Orientis, and Colonel Michael Aquino's Temple of Set, an offshoot from the Church of Satan. In 1966, Anton LaVey founded the first Church of Satan in San Francisco, which at one point claimed 10,000 members. LaVey authored the Satanic Bible and Satanic Rituals, two of Satanism's most important books. Astonishingly, when the Satanic Bible was first published, it outsold the Holy Bible two to one in many parts of America and ten to one on some college campuses. It teaches tenets that are totally opposed to goodness, purity, and selfless behavior. All religions are coming around to Satanism. We're in the uh, very throes of a new Satanic age. The evidence is all around us. All we have to do is look at it. Shabbat Shalom. Hail Satan. To the Satanist, good is evil and evil is good. The truth is a lie and a lie is a truth. Sweet is bitter and bitter is sweet. And everything is twisted around the other way. The Satanists have merely followed the pantheist way of thought to its logical conclusion. If there are no absolutes, if God doesn't exist, he hasn't said, uh, set absolute limits to what we can do. So therefore, anything that the self decides it wants, the self can go after. We believe in greed, we believe in selfishness, we believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man because this is man's natural uh, feeling. And therefore, Satanists take that to its extreme and say, if I want to be violent, I can be violent. If I want to hurt others to gain my way, then I can hurt others to gain my way. Uh, there are generally four different groups of Satanists. Uh, we would like to classify them as the, the dabbler, then you have your religious Satanist, then you have your non-traditional Satanist, and then your generational Satanist. The dabbler we would classify as the teenager. The teenager would uh, simply learn some things from his friends at school, dabble a little bit of the Ouija board, go down the library or the local bookstore and pick up a book, and kind of do his own thing. Not real dangerous, uh, but he can be moved to, into further areas which could be criminal or dangerous in nature. The dabblers are the people who are putting the graffiti up on walls, knocking over tombstones, and making a general nuisance of themselves in the public. They are the ones also who will do the uh, animal sacrifices, and they're really novices. They're considered uh, lower level Satanists by those who are higher up into the Satanic realm. Uh, the religious Satanists, are uh, protected by law. Anton LaVey's First Church of Satan in San Francisco would be an example of that. They are religious in their approach and they try not to violate any man-made laws because it is um, not productive for their own self-interest. Now the non-traditional Satanist is a gentleman or lady or the group of people who would uh, take certain ideologies, develop a cult, usually polarized around some central theme, oftentimes taken from a biblical aspect and uh, use that to uh, commit crimes, or they may not commit any crimes, but uh, for what we're talking about for these purposes, the non-traditional Satanist is oftentimes the most dangerous. Now then there are generational Satanists. These are people who would have Satanism in their family and it's passed down from generation to generation, just as the name would intimate, and these Satanists would produce all kinds of horrors uh, secretly. From infancy, they, they have uh, learned all these things. They have been molested, forced to drink blood, eat feces, uh, urinated upon, sodomized, and just from generation to generation, it continues. Many Satanists recall being fascinated with occultism at a young age. Some had been ritually dedicated to Satanist children. One person who remembers being initiated by his grandfather is Glenn. One year at a family reunion, he took all the cousins, all the little kids and he lined us all up in a row and he went down the line just one by one putting his hand on our heads and he came back and stopped at me and he said this is the chosen one after that he took me aside into a barn where it was private and he laid his hands on my head and he said at the moment of my death I pass over all my power and my ability to you I was uh finally given the wonderful privilege of realizing that Satan was the god of witchcraft and uh, I was uh, at that time made it very clear that if I really wanted to progress much further I would have to sell my soul to the devil. The main teaching is that um, Satan had a part in creating the world with God and 
he was wrongfully um, thrown out of heaven when he asked for equal power along with Jehovah God and that one day he would regain his rightful place. So we um, have to make his army bigger so the more recruits there are in um, Satanism and um, the occult on the earth, the quicker his army would grow and then he would take over and overthrow Christ and the Christian church. Now, worshiping of Satan is not a crime in the United States of America. It's protected under the First Amendment. Therefore, if you see a group of people dancing around a fire, they're not committing any crime. There's nothing that, that the United States law enforcement can do. It's not against the law to be a, a Satanist or to be a member of, of a witchcraft group you know, or to be a doorknob worshiper. I don't really care what you form a religion is. I don't investigate the religion. It's the crime I investigate. There are no statistics to prove uh, anywhere in the United States of America or the world that this stuff is widespread. But it's my opinion that it's more widespread than you can shake a stick at. Satanism in the United Kingdom is on the increase. It is, I believe, one of the fastest growing religions, as it is legally known, in this country. In Britain, we are beginning to see that Satanism is widespread. From the contacts we have through social services, voluntary agencies and the police, we are beginning to monitor the situation, therefore developing a picture which is showing that we have a very serious problem. The real Satanists, the hardcore Satanists, are involved in criminal activity, and for that reason they are going to try and look as normal as possible, the better to be able to deceive you. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're teachers, they're oftentimes people who are in positions of great influence over small children. Priests, ministers, doctors, police officers, judges, uh, businessmen, oilmen, teenagers, they're all linked together for one purpose, to sacrifice whatever they want to Satan. It would be a whole lot easier if these people wore, you know, or had horns and a pitchfork and a red suit, but they just don't. They could be your next door neighbor. I know when I was involved in the Church of Satan, they were very proud of the fact that there was not a single military installation in the world that did not have a outpost of avowed Satanists. Uh, Satanists are drawn to the military because of the idea of war and death. You see, they view war as one gigantic human sacrifice. Satanism, we are finding, is becoming international and interconnected. They are interconnected in Britain from one city to another and into Europe and into America. A lot of money is involved, a lot of finance, and this finance is made through pornographic videos, through drugs and through arms. As far as the attraction, I mean, what, what actually would make somebody become a Satanist? Well, for some people, in my case at least, it was a gradual infiltration. It was a move from things like ESP and flying saucers and then just a very gradual, many-year slide into finally regarding Satan as my God. I got into Satanism simply because of the promise of power and wealth and by being invited to some parties which I went to I was told I could have those things but it was a, a special gift that I couldn't have until I had been initiated. I think it can be put in one four-letter word, lust. And I don't just mean sexual lust. There, there is a, a lust for power that is part of our sinful nature. There is a lust, of course, for sexuality. And there is a, a kind of, uh, C.S. Lewis talks about it as a spiritual lust as the kind of, of, of spiritual itch to want to somehow reach into the unknown. We're fascinated by it. As a young boy of 13, 14, I practiced magic. When you're that age, there's no limit to your scope of your imagination. And so everything magical that we'd heard of, we tempted, calling forth the devil, invoking demons. We tried all these things, and with some effects. In 1981, Mark's quest to experience the more powerful side of black magic led him to start his own satanic coven, the Temple of Olympus. As far as I'm concerned, magic is about getting what you want. Magicians are people who get what they want. The main theme of devil worship follows along the teachings of Aleister Crowley, which is, do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. You know, you break all that down, all that means is to do whatever you want to do. They, they cater to your needs to get you involved. They want the quick, slick answers to life. 
by calling down these forces so they will be able to manipulate uh, whatever they need. If you're not popular, you are told that certain rituals, compassion rituals, will gain you popularity or gain you prestige with the opposite sex. And this is something that is also a lure to the Satanists. It's the basic uh, elemental carnal lusts of the flesh that uh, draw them in. They taught me um, how to kill someone, a spell, how to kill someone, a spell, how to get someone to lust for me. We had a lot of spells that would, uh, you, would, you, you would use to uh, hurt someone. It, it, just knowing that we had that information there in front of us it really gave us a sense of power. From my experience, a child has turned to Satanism initially because of an emotional reason. We have many more children coming from single parent families or where the, f the head of the home, the father, is not taking the fatherly role. With teenagers especially, the appeal is to rebellion. The appeal is to do whatever you can do to drive your parents crazy. They want to supernaturally get back at their parents. And we have found a lot of teenagers wanting to do it that way. The other reason, I believe, is because the church has not met the needs of these teenagers. They have not seen the supernatural power of God in the church. They've not really seen the love of Christ amongst the people. National news coverage brought the demented crimes of self-styled Satanist and serial murder Richard Ramirez into public attention. His crimes included raping a woman in the same bed as the dead body of her husband, whom he had just killed. She then listened helplessly as Ramirez sodomized her eight-year-old son. Another woman was forced to swear allegiance to Satan as Ramirez beat and raped her, while yet another elderly lady had a pentagram carved on her thigh. Ramirez arrogantly brandished secret satanic symbols to the press. He flashed a two-fingered devil sign to news reporters, prominently greeted the courtroom with, Hail Satan, and conspicuously waved the pentagram drawn on his palm. You don't understand me. You are not expected to. You are not capable of it. I am beyond your experience. I am beyond good and evil. I will be avenged. Lucifer dwells within us all. That's it. Today, Satanism can be seen to be more blatant than ever before. Satanic graffiti is no longer shocking, while recruiting, which was once hidden and obscure, is now visibly public, and sadly, youth are the chief targets. When Satanists want to recruit, we know that it's been going on for many years, this is not new, but their arrogance and their outwardness about the way they recruit is becoming unbelievable. Recruiters will go out there into various high schools and draw kids into the system because they're very street smart, some of these Satanists, and they can draw these kids into it very seductively where their parents may not even know it. Uh, sometimes they'll simply uh, suck them in through the local high schools, uh, sex and drug parties. Um, you know, they may go to the local uh, bus station, find the runaways down there, skid row, or they may come, come from very affluent families. I've noticed that these kids are bored with society, they're bored with school, they're bored with some of the churches that are out there. I have young people calling me regularly, telling me that they have been involved in some sort of animal mutilation sacrifice. And the reason why they say that they go out to these animal mutilation sacrifices is because they're provided with vodka or um, drugs, cocaine, or free sex. And they don't particularly like, as this one girl said to me, I don't really like to hear the squealing animals in the cemeteries when they do their rituals, but they give me free vodka. Repeatedly you see the drug usage being used. Sometimes the high priest or the high priestess won't use drugs because they may not be able to have that mental, spiritual control over the people that are in the actual coven, but they'll then give it to their members. And so to cover up what I'd seen and what I'd been taking part in, um, I started taking drugs, which they provided. So that was another reason for staying at the coven. Uh, they were providing me heroin. The old proverb warning against wine, women and song has taken on new spiritual momentum. Sex, drugs and rock and roll is the modern cry of a rebellious youth. Satanist Alistair Crowley has indirectly influenced many leading rock groups, including the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and Ozzy Osbourne, who even wrote a song about Crowley. Today's music industry commercializes satanic themes without concern for the souls they seduce. Even those bands who promote hardcore Satanism deny that they are Satanists, but admit that Satanism sells and that they are simply giving their fans what they want to hear. Many bands get their ideas from horror films and videos, 
which explicitly depict satanic rituals, death, murder, and cruel tortures. Evidence shows music laced with satanic overtones has played an important role in the lives of many of the teenagers who have been convicted of satanic killings. Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, obsessed with the music of the rock group ACDC, admitted that their lyrics influenced his mayhem killings. Peer pressure is, is especially important to the teenager, even more so. We all want to feel accepted, but teenagers need that stability in their lives of knowing that they are able to carry on relationships. And when the majority of their friends are wearing the heavy metal t-shirts and listening to the black metal music that incorporates satanic lyrics, they feel compelled to belong to the group. I see a lot of them that are getting involved in it. And it started out with the music, you know, not all rock music, mostly the things like the black metal or speed metal type things, where they have the heavy satanic type overtones to the music. Your groups such as Venom, uh, Slayer, uh, Merciful Fate, uh, these are bands that will, will blatantly teach these kids the various occultic practices. One of the more popular bands playing in London is a group called The Devoted Men, led by Mark, high priest of the Temple of Olympus. Mark says he receives transmissions from demon gods and goddesses who give him the music and lyrics to perform on stage. Very frequently there's an otherworldliness about the words themselves. It's almost as if we're not writing the words, but we're just, our hand is performing the action, but it's not our mind. <laughs> Devoted men take the music that we write for the Temple of Olympus and perform it in London at the night spots and venues before a live young audience basically present our message. The band's main function is to recruit new members into the outer circle of Mark's satanic cult. High priestesses Sarah and Julianne left the cult due to the inner circle's heavy dependence on black magic and perverted sex rituals. The idea of the devoted men, which was the band that they had, was another way to try and get world domination. They thought that by being a successful rock band, that they'd get the money to go to the States and open up an enormous complex religion over there. When you first joined the Temple of Olympus, you'd attend an outer circle meeting. And from going on to that, you wouldn't realise what was really going on in the Temple of Olympus at all, because that's only witnessed by the inner order. Um, you'd be offering flowers and wine and reading out poetry, and everything would be very sweet and very lovely. In Britain, we are seeing from the recruitment programmes that we are watching and from the contact magazines that we have, that what is being advertised and what is actually happening in the cover are two different things. We were told to use whitewash liberally and to cover up any signs of any shades of black magic at all that are in the inner order. And there are many other orders who put on this front of being fairly innocent, but actually when the people are involved and initiated, they see that they're being trained into prostitution, in pornography, as well as into Satanism itself as a religion. When I was involved in Satanism, we basically recruited from the teenage years, but today it's becoming very apparent that uh, they are trying to get children at a very young age, and this is done partially through the use of the media, whether through things like um, cartoons, which begin with, with ideas that there is good magic and there is bad magic, and it's okay if you use the good magic, and demonic characters, little demon figurines that kids buy. He-Man, on, on the cartoon He-Man, you have people um, calling down fire, you have people calling down power into themselves from occult, unseen, hidden sources through uh, talismans and through chanting, and you have these people saying magic words, and then they are empowered and endued with power. So that child looks at that and says, I want to be powerful. Children are being programmed into occult practices by the cartoons and games and stories that they see on television. It seems harmless and fun and exciting. Games like Dungeons and Dragons incorporate actual occult practices 
into the body of the game where you are, are actually asked to take on an occult persona that has powers. Believe it or not, uh, you can learn spells right out of Dungeons and Dragons. Kids will learn them from the Ouija board. Uh, I have interviewed kids who have played the Ouija board and the Ouija board literally told them how to draw a five-pointed star and how to do a particular spell. When the Ouija board gave us that spell, uh, one of the things it told us to do was to draw a, a pentagram. And uh, we had to chant a certain chant and uh, we burned uh, two black candles Sometimes children themselves who have um, played with a Ouija boards believe in it to be a bit of fun. They haven't been able to sleep, they've had nightmares, and their lives have been completely changed because of some um, involvement which they thought was innocent, which they thought was harmless. The Ouija board wasn't enough, so we started getting into the uh, incense books, uh, potions.